Now we're going to discuss sharpening and resizing in this lesson because the two are intertwined and cannot be considered independent of each other as some of the tutorials on this subject would have you believe. Now, I constantly see tutorials online that explain sharpening and the vast majority of them say nothing about resolution or physical size of the image, issues that cannot be ignored if you really care about high quality results. Now let's look at this image of Kaylee again. And at first glance, it looks perfect. And actually it is. We'll go to 100% magnification on the image and everything is sharp and in focus. And both eyes are in focus, hair for the most part. So from a technical standpoint, this is a perfect image. Everything is in focus the way it should be. So you would say to yourself, well, why does it need to be sharpened? And you'd be right because you'd say it doesn't and it doesn't yet. And I consider myself one of the worst offenders. People will come in and sharpen an image like this and completely destroy it. And let me show you why. And it's I mean, I did this, okay? This is something that I have done many, many times when I first started using Photoshop. So let's just come up to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. Now, don't ask me why they call it the Unsharp Mask. No one knows. Only the people at Adobe understand why it's called that. Be that as it may, this is where you're going to do 99% of your sharpening. Now you'll see three values here, amount 150, radius of one, and threshold of one. Uh, that's pretty much the default setting and it means nothing because you have to deal with the image in front of you, not these default settings and think that it's gonna be right because it's not. All right, now we have a preview box up here. So let's take a look at before and after and you cannot see any difference whatsoever. I can't see it on my screen here and I know you can't see it on the video yet. The settings of 150 in one pixel and zero in the threshold are common settings. Now the first thing we have to identify is what kind of image do we have here? Do we have a JPEG that's gonna be used on the internet or do we have a high resolution TIFF image that's gonna be converted into a print? Let's take a look. We have image, image size, and sure enough, resolution 1200. Width is around 2300 pixels, the height is around 3500 pixels, and from a physical standpoint, the image is 1 by 2, but if we change this to 300, then it uh, maxes out at about 11 by 7.5. Now you can make it larger than that, uh, but that's the native resolution. You can actually go down to about 250 and resample it, and you can get it up to 9 by 14. But the point is, is that this is a high resolution image with tons of digital information on it in the Profoto RGB color space. It's a 16-bit image, so there really doesn't need to be anything done to it yet. Come to Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, and we'll go, say, 200, and maybe a radius of 2 before and after. Now is when I can start to see the difference. And you'll look at that and go, wow, that's a lot better. There's more detail in her face and her eyes are clearer and, you know, detail in the lips and so on. And yes, you would be correct. You can see that on a computer monitor. Let's take it a step further and go to 300. And then you're saying to yourself, wow, there's even more detail. I can see even more of the detail in her face and her eyes and the hair and so on and so on. And you're thinking, okay, well, more is more. And that's really not true. Let's go to a ridiculous extreme, take it up to 400. And this is the point at which we begin to see degradation of the image. The haloing is going on right here, and that's a bad thing. We have haloing on her hair and severe distortion in her face. Now let's take it a step further and before and after. And what happens is that you start doing this on a computer screen and yes, it does look better, but you're really degrading the image, especially if you're gonna print it. If you're gonna print an image like this, if this image is sharp in camera, don't add any sharpening, leave it alone, I promise you. I mean, this is the, the voice of 35 years experience speaking. Do not sharpen an image if it's sharp in camera when you're going to print it. An 8x10, 11 by 14 whatever it happens to be, uh, because it will look horrible. Yet, if you're going to use this image on the internet at, say, 600 by 800 PPI or something in that neighborhood, a little bit of sharpening might be appropriate. 
All right, now let me show you why. What is sharpening? Let's answer that question. Sharpening, the textbook definition of sharpening is perceived increase in contrast between adjoining pixels. And it's actually an optical illusion. I'm gonna go 100% in this image and then I'm gonna to continue to enlarge this to pixel level and we'll navigate to a spot up here on Kaylee's eye, right here. And let's get in even tighter. All right, so we're way, way zoomed in, 4,000%. Okay, now's where you can see this stuff. I'm gonna come up to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask, Before and After, Before and After. Now you can obviously see, especially up here, the increase in contrast between adjoining pixels. You can also see it right here on her eye and the iris before and after. Let's take it, uh, say, to 300. Let's do a big jump. Before and after. So what you see on your screen as sharpening is really nothing more than additional contrast between adjoining pixels. Now, what's the radius mean? Well, radius means if you say a radius of two, that means this sharpening is going to be applied to clusters of two pixels, or three, or four. And you can see, especially down here, how we have clusters of four pixels that really accentuate. See that? That's way too much. So there's the definition, it, it, it's, it's pixel level adjustments that are happening. All right, we'll come back to this view of the image and here's what the image looks like with that ridiculous setting on it, but you can see the damage to the, to the image. Now what happens is that, again, like I said before, you'll get caught up in thinking, okay, it looks better if I do more sharpening and you keep adding it incrementally until you've destroyed the image. But it's like the frog that gets boiled in the water. He doesn't find out that he's actually boiling in water until it's too late as the water increases in temperature. You've heard that analogy, I'm sure. All right, now let's look at these settings in a more realistic set. Okay, so we're gonna start at 100 and I'm gonna put this radius at two. And we're always checking the before and after, and there's after where you can barely tell it. Now, what is this threshold setting? Well, it's an extremely complicated mathematical algorithm that I don't even fully understand. However, I do know that you set threshold to avoid sharpening noise. Now this image is 100 ISO, but it has monochromatic tones right here in the background. And if there were noise in the image, you would want to put a threshold in there of about two or three, you know, somewhere in there that tells Photoshop, don't sharpen the noise or don't sharpen anything in the monochromatic tones. What Photoshop is going to be looking for is the contrast in pixels on Kaylee or an area that has a lot of contrast, okay? Now this is a more realistic setting. Since it's a 100 ISO image, and since we don't have any noise over here, we can go to zero on the threshold because we're not gonna be sharpening any noise. So this is a perfect setting if you were going to sharpen it. Now there's any number of different reasons you might wanna do that, but generally speaking, you don't wanna sharpen an image that is sharp in camera, that's in focus in camera, you don't want to sharpen that image for future use. Now, let's come out of here and we're going to resize the image. And we're going to go to 100 pixels per inch. And then we're going to take this and we're going to go, let's see, let's take it uh, 800 pixels high. That's kind of a small image. And there's 100%. And you might use this image like on the internet if there was a website. Uh, that posted pictures of the staff of a certain company, uh, then you would have four or five of these of different people. And sharpening this image is appropriate because you have so many different computer screens, so many different computer screen settings that a little bit of sharpening would help. So let's see how we do that. Now filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Again, don't pay any attention to these. I've never used them. In, in 25 years of using Photoshop, I've never used 
anything except the Unsharp mask. It really is all you need. Now, for a small JPEG, the settings are 0.5 on the radius and 100 on the amount, and again, zero on the threshold. Now, let's see before and after. Well, I'm going to take this up to 150. And that's about where it needs to be. Now, I know it sounds funny, 0.5, but with all of the experimenting that I've done on this subject, 0.5 is good for a small JPEG of this size, okay? Just take my word for it. 150.5, and that's about all it needs. Doesn't need much. And generally speaking, when you want to do sharpening, do your sharpening only up to the point that you begin to see it, where you can begin to tell the difference. That's all it needs. Over sharpening is one of the most common problems that I see on the internet. It's the thing that people do wrong most of the time other than oversaturation. So don't be that person. Less is more when it comes to sharpening. So on a small JPEG, 150 on the percent, about 0.5 on the radius and zero on the threshold. If you're doing a high resolution image, let's go back and let's go ahead and do that. If you're doing a high resolution image, you want to go filter, sharpen. You want to go two pixels. And maybe 150, but generally 100 is going to be enough. And zero threshold if you don't have any noise in the image, if it's a 100 ISO image. So there you have it. The proper way to do sharpening on an in-focus image. Now, in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to do sharpening with images that are just slightly out of focus. It's the perfect picture, but it's a little bit out of focus, and we're going to try to save it. So that's coming up in the next lesson about Photoshop.